Okay, this video here is to uh, help explain a little bit about the D-plane and also uh, some of the stuff we'll see on video and being able to explain some relationships. The first thing we have here is a video of Rob Noel hitting a golf shot. And you look at these videos and we see this all the time, sometimes with high handicap golfers, and our first gut reaction is to say, well, clearly he's over the top. He's swinging left. His path is going to the left of the hole. But those of us with track man know not to assume that until we know something else. So we do now I put his track man numbers up. And yes, the, ba the base of his plane is 5.3 degrees to the left. So that's, that red circle that we see on the screen is the plane of his swing and not necessarily the path. It is 5.3 degrees left, and that's why he has that over-the-top look. His angle of attack was 7.5 degrees down, so his real path, which is the movement of the sweet spot at impact, was only a tenth of a degree inside out, so almost dead straight away. And his club face was square at impact, and the ball went dead straight. So this video would be very, very difficult to diagnose because we would first say, well, surely he's cutting across it when really he isn't. And he can produce straightaway ball flight as long as he hits the ball with a square club face hitting down on it as much as he is. Now, this same video, if he happened to be having an angle of attack of zero, he would be cutting across this ball at 5.3 degrees left, but he's not because he's hitting down on it. The downward motion on the inclined plane can cancel out the outward to in motion of the plane itself depending on how much each of those are. So it's a very important relationship to understand. Another thing we use, we'll use a hula hoop because we believe that we have to divorce plane direction versus path direction. They're only the same at low point. So here we have a plane this, this hula hoop that's on a plane and the base of this plane is this pipe and this pipe is aimed right at the hole. So this plane, when the base of the plane points to the hole, we would call that a zero plane. Now, even though this is a zero plane, as this club's moving down this, this, this inclined plane, the, the, the club's sweet spot is clearly moving to the right and as the club moves up the plane after it reaches low point, it's clearly moving to the left. So the thing to understand is that one single plane can produce both outside in and inside out paths even though the plane is aimed at the hole. So what I did is I created a model. It's called the D-plane model and this will help explain this. So the first thing we have to understand here is that the path of the golf club is ever changing on the inclined plane. So here from the straight sky view, you can see this stick sticking out of the face of the club. Now this stick sticking out of the face of the club is the motion of the club head. It's not the face angle. It's the motion, which is the path. And as you can see, with this shaft clearly leaning forward on this single pendulum model, this club head's moving down pretty good. And you can see how much inside out it is, or much, how much to the right. And as we get further and further and closer and closer to low point, you can see that that path in relation to this yellow line, which is the target line, is becoming less and less out to the right. And finally, when we get to the bottom of this swing arc, now the path of the club is directly down the target line and remember the base of this plane is also parallel to the target line. So if we want a straightaway path when the base of the plane is at the target line we got to hit it at low point with a square club face to create a straight shot. And then after low point as the shaft leans more and more backwards and the sweet spot moves more and more left then the path goes left and more left. So then if the club face was square to the target, that would be a, that would be a tilted D-plane and a fade. So the path of the golf club is ever-changing on the inclined plane. And when do we need to know when the, where the path is or what direction it's moving? is at impact. So the plane that we're swinging it on is what we're going to see on video. And, but the path is determined where on that plane the ball is hit. The other thing to understand is that the angle of attack is ever changing on the inclined plane. So here this club is coming down towards low point and you could see 
this same stick really hitting down and that angle is changing all the time as this club get nears its low point less and less down less and less down until finally there's your level angle of attack shaft straight up and down angle of attack is zero now that's only on this single pendulum model I know a golfer is a double pendulum model so the shaft sometimes can be leaning backwards forwards or straight up and down to reach low point and also for the, for the club not to be hitting down or up. So that could be very tricky uh, with a double pendulum model, but with this single pendulum D-plane model, it's not the same. Then once the club shaft starts leaning backwards, the angle of attack starts going up more and more. So it's ever-changing. It's never the same. So if we move the ball position, um, that can change the angle of attack uh, drastically for us. The other thing to understand is that as the plane angle changes the path of the club changes if we're hitting down or up on it so here's a situation here where the shaft is clearly leaning forward with a downward, downward angle of attack and what you can't see because we're videoing this from the sky is this plane angle is vertical to the ground 90 degrees so as you can see at that moment the path of the golf club is parallel to the target line but as we start shallowing the plane angle going closer and closer to 45 degrees you start to see a relationship that this line no longer is parallel to that white line and it gets more and more inside out as that as that plane angle gets flatter and flatter you could see that's even more inside out and so forth very important understanding is that the flatter the plane angle the more hitting down or up with up affects the path very very important thing since we don't hit the ball with a perfectly vertical plane angle we have to take angle of attack into consideration now the shot that Rob hit the first one where he looked over the top there's his plane sure enough it is left so the base of his plane is left and that on video is going to look over the top however if he wants straightaway ball flight He's got to find the point in time in that swing arc where the path is at the hole. So now here we are. The path is going right down the target line. The base of the plane is left. If he lines the face up at this very moment, straight at the hole, the vertical D plane would produce straightaway ball flight. So there's, again, it's just shaft leaning forward. And there's the path going to the hole. And all he has to do is square the club face up and have a good impact point, And the ball goes dead straight very important relationships to understand the next video we see this is a video clearly looks inside out but again not so fast yes the planes base is aiming or pointing to the right of the target definitely here's the target here and he's definitely looks like swinging out to the right however his angle of attack is 3.6 degrees up and so his path at impact is only one degree inside out, which is not very much. The club face is square at impact, and this ball went very, very straight. You can see the ball right here, and it's just going to drop on that flag. So here's a swing that we might have changed if all we had was video and not knowing the angle of attack. And we, we should definitely not change this swing if he can consistently do it and has a good impact point. Now, however, if this same swing, if he was hitting it at low point, would definitely be inside out. And if he was hitting even slightly down on it, it would be way inside out. So, again, the swing on video can, can three swings can look the same on video and have many different paths. And that's a very, very important thing to understand. Now, here's how he hits that shot. So, here's the base of his plane to the right of the hole. And here's his target line. And, again, he's not hitting down on it, he's hitting up. So here's the path changing, changing, changing. And we're going to get the path going right down the target line right there. So his path is at the target line. I mean, his path is down the target line. His shaft is leaning backwards on our single pendulum model. And if the face is square at that point in time, there's your vertical D-plane. The ball has to fly straight with a good impact point. Now, what we tried to do for years is get our players to swing on this plane whose base points to the hole, which is which it'll look like this on video. The sweet spot comes down, hits the golf ball, ball goes down the same plane on the way through. However, 
if he's hitting down on it, like here again, the plane's base is at the target, but his angle of attack is 7.6 degrees down. So his actual path at impact is 3.6 degrees inside out. His club face is 1.9 degrees open of the hole, so it's about 1.7 closed of the path, and the ball started right and drew to the hole. So there's the, there's the hole there, and you'll see that ball start to the right, and it will draw back to the hole. So if you're going to have a person who looks like this on video and they hit down on it, they're going to have to draw the ball to get it to go to the hole. If they're hitting at the bottom of their circle, they can hit a straightaway shot, not recommended with an iron. And if they're hitting it up with this kind of video where this plane looks down and through on the same plane, that's going to be slightly outside in. They're going to have to play a cut. So those are very important understandings about how the D-plane works, how the D-plane model works. And uh, also, too, if you've got any questions about the D-Plane model, we do sell those, and uh, which is one of the best ways to show your students how the D-Plane works and the adjustments. Uh, you can contact me at uh, jameslights at pga.com is my email, and my telephone number is area code 985-290-8507. Again, let's have lawful golf, pay homage to the D-Plane, and the impact point in the golf game will be yours. God bless.